Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be going over private credit, why you should care, what are some of the negatives, and what platforms do I recommend to help you make money? So first off, what is private credit? Private credit, credit is nothing more than ownership or interest in an entity or company that is not publicly listed or traded. Uh, it's typically a use of investment capital. Private equity comes from high net worth individuals, family offices, uh, things like that. A good example of private credit is uh, Twitter. So Twitter was recently bought by Elon Musk and he needed a way to finance this deal. In order to do that and come up with the money, he went to certain high net worth individuals, think Larry Ellison, but he also went to private equity and private credit firms in order to secure that funding. Uh, this is a great example here, uh, private credit, why, why and why now. This is on the Titan uh, website, which I'm gonna link down below in the description. But there are a couple reasons why private credit or private equity today uh, is so in demand. So as you all know, we are at the, we're, 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 we've seen peak inflation um, and we've also seen a ton of market volatility. So how do you diversify and deleverage out of ETFs and stocks that are traditionally high, vol high volatility, but also high gains? Uh, this is where private credit can come in. So you have a couple things here. You know, one is predictable income. So I loan you money, you loan, you pay me back at a, at a certain percentage in a certain amount of time. So I loan you a million dollars at 5%. You decide, or you, you then pay me back uh, over the course of months or years at a 5% interest rate or whatever the negotiated rate is. And it typically uh, somewhat mirrors inflation. So inflation is 9%, you may get uh, you may get a loan for seven or eight, uh, or even you know maybe six percent. But from a uh, borrowing perspective, it, it typically it follows inflation. Um, but it also makes it very predictable from an income perspective. So in this case, you're seeing here, you know, predictable income. So you're able to know when you're going to be paid back on your loan. You know the interest rate, um, and, and it becomes something that you can you know look at three, five, ten years out in the future. Uh, like I talked about stability. So private credit products don't trade on the public exchanges. Like I said, they're typically private institutions, uh, much like, again, the Twitter example where it was public, it was brought back private, and the only way to do that is to secure funding uh, from outside groups, again, high net worth individuals or family offices. Um, and then the other one you, I wanted you to look at is the risk-adjusted returns. So. Uh, typically, the higher returns are going to be in the stocks, uh, even in the venture capital. But something that's more risk adjusted in this case, uh, much like a bond, would be venture would be a sorry private credit. Uh, if you look down here, I really like this graph. So if you look at where private credit falls in, like I said, you've got stock over here on the higher risk, higher return. Uh, you have bonds at the lower risk, for lower return. You know, and bonds are some of the things that you'll see rotated in and out of portfolios. As market volatility increases, typically bonds go up and outside of our portfolio, as well as when volatility goes up, things like gold and silver will also go up. They go down, gold and silver will go down. But in this case, you have private real estate, you have publicly traded REITs, private credit here. So you're still getting, uh, you're not getting quite as high return on stocks as you do with private credit, but you're seeing you're getting a lot less risk here. So a lot less risk. And one of the other things this article goes over and I really like is, you know, why now? And that's a great question. You know, why is it that you should be looking at this now? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, one, we're, we are, like this article says, we've got inflation at 40 year highs. And it'd be great if you had an investment that could track that inflation as it goes up, as well as lock in those rates. So when inflation comes back down, you'll, you're still earning a higher interest rate on your investment than what inflation is. So if inflation is 9% and you can lock in uh, a 9% credit deal where you're funding uh, an entity at 9%, you lock that in for say five years and you're paid out on a quarterly, semi-annually basis. Well, what happens when inflation starts to fall? And, and it will, inflation will go back down to 8%, 7%, 6%, 5%. Five. Those, in, as inflation's falling, that's fine. You've locked in, you've locked in your credit uh, your interest rate at nine percent now obviously when that loan matures and it's time to move on you know you'll have to go find a new deal and lock that in a new interest rate but it helps to again like it says floating rate credit it helps to drive that up and make it more predictable uh higher yields like i just said a minute ago um you know we've got different things we've got the pandemic we've got macroeconomic issues we have supply chain issues um, and it's really easy to get caught up and say, you know, well, the stock market's doing bad. Um, you know, woe is me. There's nothing I can do. 
Uh, the higher yields that this brings in make it really easy to not only offset inflation, but potentially beat inflation uh, as you're moving forward. And then the, the, the big one here, I think probably number three is this lower default rate. Uh, this is great. I, I think this is something that people don't think about. The default rate on a credit deal is much lower than it would be from something like, um, you know, purchasing a stock, um, getting on margin, running that up, um, or doing a traditional uh, bank loan from a default standpoint. Um, default rates have been, like this article says, at historic lows. Um, interest covered ratios, and that's the measure to which a company can pay interest on its debt, does remain strong. So a lot of companies had ended up buying, I'm sorry, uh, uh, purchasing a lot of debt when interest rates were around one to 2%. And being able to pay that back at one to two percent is much higher or as a much higher uh, percentage of, of success than it would be when you're looking to pay a debt around seven, eight, nine percent. However, companies have still done uh, very well paying back their loans. So what are some of the negatives here? You know, Ryan, you walked me through, you know, why, why now? You know, what is private credit? What does it look like? But let's talk about some of the negatives. Well, first, uh, private credit carries more fund fees than you would see with an index fund or an ETF. Um, I'm going to link it up here, though, for a way to build the portfolio out of uh, index funds, ETFs, and bonds. But in this case, uh, what you're used to from a Vanguard fund, maybe a 0.1, a 10 basis points, maybe even a 20 basis points uh, expense ratio, you're getting a, you're going to be paying a much higher fee here, and that's for a few reasons. Number one, uh, you're not managing it. Number two, you're going to get carried interest potentially on this. Um, and number three, you're going to have cash in, cash out rates. You're going to have management fees, etc. Because instead of tracking 500 stocks or 30 stocks, um, you're tracking, uh, I'm sorry, you're not tracking anything anymore. You're actually financing a deal. So someone needs to be there, typically an investment team, a managing director, um, a global head of assets, things like that, to go over uh, the deal, put it together, you know, bring the parties, you know, all in the same room, make sure funding is secured. So you're going to pay, uh, you're going to pay for that. And sometimes those fees may or may not be worth it, depending on your situation and how you want to diversify, uh, your portfolio, you know, going further with that, um, as you're paying more, you're also not in control. So the investment team, like I just said, you usually have a managing director. Um, you'll have a, a head of private credit, etc. Uh, that will handle that deal. So you're paying more and you're not in control. For some people, that may, you know, that may be a, uh, that may be a big issue. And then finally, uh, the lockup period. So where as a stock or an ETF or even a bond, you can typically sell those very quickly. You know, I can buy and sell a stock two or three times in a week if I want to. With an ETF, I can unload that, you know, several times during the day, buying in, in debt or buying stocks in and out of an ETF. The lockout period on this is typically a five to 10 years. Although you sometimes have liquidity uh, calls where you can where you can take some funding out um, every couple uh, every couple years. Now, one of the things that I want to look at here is uh, I'm going to go through uh, one of the platforms I like to use is Titan. I'm going to link them down in the description again, but um, I use Titan for my venture capital fund through Ark Invest, and I think Titan gives you a very easy way to get in. Um, and as mentioned before, a lot of these funds are only made for traditionally, we're only made for your high net worth individuals. So, you know, think $250,000 minimum to get in all the way up to potentially 25 million. So what do I like about Titan here is my uh, platform. You know, I recommend if you want to get started and obviously you don't have uh, $250,000 to get involved. Uh, Titan gives you the ability to invest in what's called tactical private credit through Carlisle Group and Carlisle Group. Um, is a company that's global. They run, they, they have several uh, hundred billion dollars in, in private credit uh, that they use to finance deals, uh, help with debt consolidation, and give companies a little bit of a buffer there uh, should they need it when times are tough. Could be acquisition, could be deleveraging, could be uh, negotiating lower interest rate on a previous loan, which I think you'll see more of um, into 23. But one of the things I like about it is uh, you're getting all the expertise of the Carlisle Group, but again, lower lower entry point. Um, and here we're going to go through just real quick uh, what some of the uh, important aspects of the end of this fund are. So again, it is private credit. Um, here's the inception date, the distribution rate, the historical return. I talked about you know here uh, around two and a half percent net of fee or almost three percent net of fees. Minimum investment two thousand uh, dollars. You can invest in then hundred dollar increments. 
here and here's some of the strategy expenses over here so you know again very different than an ETF, very different um, than an index fund, where you're gonna be paying more in management fees. So you've got a management fee here, uh, you've got an incentive fee to set up the deal, you've got interest payment on the debts, and you've got operating expenses. So net of fees, you're looking at about 2.73% uh, uh, yearly uh, performance. And some of the things that they invest in down here are, you know, like I said, we went over direct lending, opportunistic credit, uh, liquid credit where you're able to to move in and move out of a fund um, and then real estate credit if you wanted to do some kind of uh, REIT or real estate uh, purchase. So I hope this was in, uh, informational for you. Uh, Titan's one of the greatest great platforms I use to invest in things like venture capital and into private credit. You know, it's got a lower minimum um, and the, the fees are being just passed on from something like the Carlisle Group. The last thing I want to go over is this is the Carlisle uh, homepage for private credit. I'm going to link this in the description below, but if you'd like to learn more about some of the options they have from a credit segment, whether it's liquid, illiquid, um, or real estate assets, things like aviation financing, energy credit, etc. I'm going to link that down below, but what are your thoughts on private credit? Um, would you be interested in signing up for this? And do you feel like this is a successful way to diversify your portfolio? Let me know in the comments section. And as always, don't forget to design your financial freedom. Take care. Bye-bye.